Hey guys, welcome, keep coming in. You're welcome. It's your one and only Waka Waka doctor here, and welcome, 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 keep coming in. I am uh, working today, so um, I'm at work. Um, so um, that's why I'm doing this in my car. Um, I'm working all night today, 24 hours, seeing patients. So um, you get it. Keep coming in, keep coming in, keep coming in. <laughs> keep coming in. Thanks for joining. Today uh, we'll be talking about migrating to Poland. So if you want to uh, go to Poland um, and you want to leave where you are at the moment, this is where you have to be. So we'll be talking about everything Poland. All right. Yay. Here she is. Hi. So, how are you? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Good, good, good. Sorry, I'm in my car. I'm still at work. Um, nope. And I'm, I'm working all night today. But this is, this is the only opportunity we have. Um, and thanks for joining me, okay? No problem. Thank you. Yeah, so... Today we are talking about all things Poland, how to move over to Poland. And, and people are joining in, people are coming in, they're seeing you. Welcome everybody. Um, it's good to be having this discussion. And like I always say um, in my videos, you will have an opportunity to have this saved. Um, so you can always go back to it and watch. So we're talking all things Poland. So tell us, how long have you been in Poland for? Okay, I've been in Poland for two years. I moved here for my master's in 2019. Okay. Yes, this video will be recorded. Don't worry, it will be recorded. Now, you moved to, 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 to do your master's in 2019, so I can assume that you have all it takes to tell us about Poland. And besides, um, she has a YouTube channel that talks about everything Poland. So even after this, you can visit our YouTube channel to find out about Poland. We will be leaving links um, and names that you can check on YouTube to find a channel. Is that all right? So tell us quickly, where exactly is Poland? Uh, what's the currency like? What's the weather like? What's the food like? Tell us. What's, what, tell us about Poland. Talk about Poland to us. Sell Poland to me. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, so Poland is uh, located in Central Europe. Uh, so the official language that we speak here in Poland is Polish. As for the currency, we use Polish Zwoty. So this is not Euros, this is our own uh, currency. So it's called the Polish Zwoty. As for the weather, we have uh, four different weathers all across, uh, like all year long. But the coldest is definitely in the winter, like we currently have right now. And uh, in the summer, we have like the hottest weather. So this is what we have here. So when it comes to the food uh, here in Poland, you could get a variety of food. So what they normally eat here or what we normally eat here, uh, you would find a lot of potatoes. You would find a lot of sausages. You would definitely find all form of meats and carbohydrates. And of course, you would find African food as well, because we have like a lot of African stores here as well. So you have like African stores in most of the major cities, so you'd be able to get like your African food. Uh, so okay. when it comes to uh, the transportation, I guess you said something like that? Yes, yes. So uh, the, the different forms of transportation here, we have uh, the train, we have trams, we have buses, and also we have like the metro line. So most of them run 247, so like we have night buses, so these ones are designated for only nighttime movement. Okay. Okay. I, I, you know, you know, they call me Waka Waka doctor because I, I, I move, I move, I'm always everywhere. I spent, I spent a night in Krakow, right? Krakow, that, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent a night there. I was in the city center and I went looking for food. Unfortunately now I can't remember the food, but it was meh, sumptuous. I can't remember, but it's a, it's a staple meal down there, and, but it was fantastic. And I thought that, yeah, Poland might really have um, things to offer. Okay, so what's the, well, I wouldn't say the easiest way. How can people move from wherever they are now to Poland? 
Okay, so um, like myself, I came here as a result of school, so I wanted to come do my master's. So you can come to Poland either for work, for school, or you're coming as a tourist, so you just want to have a feel of what Poland looks like. So those are like the three major ways that you can come into Poland from wherever you are in the world. Okay, so let's take it one after the other. Um, can you tell us about moving into Poland if you're coming as a student? Um, my understanding is that's probably the easiest way to get in. Um, so how can one come into Poland as a student? How did you do it? Okay, so uh, first of all, what you need to do if you're coming into Poland as a student or coming to school, first of all, you need to find a university, so a school that offers the course that you're interested in. So either you're coming for a master's or you're coming for a bachelor's degree, it all depends. So you find the school, you apply for the school, you get to uh, put in your documents because there's an entire process for the recruitment and everything. So you would upload your documents and if you get the admission, you would be given uh, a conditional offer letter. So this conditional offer would give you like a time frame to pay your fees. So once you're done paying the fees and you confirm with the school that you've paid your fees, then you can proceed with uh, applying for a student's visa. So now this visa, the school normally, when you get the admission, the school will give you a couple of documents that can help you with your visa process. So you would have to uh, show your offer letter. So no longer the conditional one, but like the one that's, actually states that you're now a student of the university. So you would have this document. You would also have a document that confirms that you have paid your school fees and everything. So you would have that. The school would also uh, make a document. They call it a support document. So this is them asking the embassy to help you uh, process your visa because you're coming to school in their school. So another document they would also give you would be, um, they'll give you a confirmation that you have a place in the dormitories. So with all these documents together, you would try to book an appointment. So booking an appointment at the moment in most countries would usually uh, mean you need to call the embassy, pick a date, and they'll tell you the dates they have available, and then you go there to the embassy, submit your document. This process usually takes about two weeks, and you'd get the result. So if the result is a positive one, you can proceed to coming here to school. If it's a negative one, you actually have the right to appeal for them to try to go over the entire process again and grant you uh, a visa to come here. So that's how to come here for school. Okay. And, and is, it, is it very tough, difficult to do all these things and get all these documents? Well, it depends. Uh, so if, for example, you have already gotten the admission, you, all you need to do is you need to be in constant communication with the school. So you need to ask the school for these documents although they would normally provide them to you but you would have to like constantly like follow up of course you need to follow up and then getting a visa date like back in nigeria where i came from it actually takes a while so you don't just for example if i'm coming to school in february i would not just uh, wait till the end of january and start to make calls to the embassy i would have to try to do it earlier because it takes some time so okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to gather all your documents, so, okay, for example, the next um, uh, applications would be open by May. So in May, applications will be open. So from May up until September, you're doing the entire applying and paying your fees and everything. So by September, you should try to already go to the embassy and get your documentation done so you can come to start school by October. Okay. And... Now, for some countries, they usually need you to have a certain amount of money in your account, a blocked mm -hmm. account. Some people require so, 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 and so. Um, studying in Poland, is it tuition free? If not, do you need, how much do you need on an average to have in your account? Okay, so uh, Poland does not require you to have a blocked account. So you just need to, first of all, pay your tuition. So once you've paid your tuition and you have confirmed that you have the dormitory confirmation, so you have a document stating you have a place. When it comes to proof of funds, you either need a sponsor or a self-sponsored. So if you, if you have a sponsor, your sponsor just needs to write a, a sponsorship letter. So this is a letter to the embassy stating that they would finance your entire um, schooling. So they would write the sponsorship letter and then they would show their pay slips. So if, for example, someone, your sponsor works in a corporate uh, uh, place, the person needs to give like three months space to show that I can actually cater to this person's needs if this person is in another country. So they would uh, show those space slips. 
they would also show like a a contract so your, like your employment letter like we have back in nigeria it's going to be your employment letter so these three documents is what covers if you have a sponsor maybe your parents or an uncle that's how to go but if you're self-sponsored you would probably uh, what you need to do is you need to go and have like a credit card created for you and most times it's good for you to have at least two million naira and above so when it comes to naira like two million naira and above so that's what you so need to you're have. saying that if you're going to give a proof of your statement of account you should have at least two million in there uh yes for credit card yes what, what when you say credit card you're saying you must have a credit card you would go because in Nigeria we don't necessarily use like the credit card system. We don't yes. do the credit. So what you do is I'm very well aware that uh, First Bank, I think First Bank offers uh, something like this. So you would go to apply for like a Visa Gold. This is what it's called. So you would tell them you want a Visa Gold card, and then you deposit like that two million or above. It depends. Like the higher you go, the better. The it better. Is. But the <laughs> least you need is two million. Yes, about that. Wow, wow. So I mean. Most countries, you know, I, I've spoken on my YouTube um, channel about Norway. Well, Norway is also about two million, but countries like, um, say, Germany, where you need a block account of five million. Um, they're also like Finland, you need five million. I mean, so this is an alternative. You don't need to spend that high. Between two, no. two point five million, you're you're sorted. Yes, Brilliant. you're sorted. Brilliant. So, for students who are coming into Poland, is there any other thing they need to know? For them hmm. to get a visa, for them to get scholarships. Are there scholarships available? Yes, there are scholarships available, but just for master students at the moment. Just for so, master students at the moment. Okay. Do you have so, a list? Do you have a list of schools or towns or cities where it is where you? I mean, that's so easy to get these things. Okay, so I would give like maybe my top five. Uh, cities in Poland for students because it's important that if you're coming from a different place, you should try to go to a city where you have more foreigners. So that's the problem. Poland has there are some cities that are like predominantly packed with foreigners, while there are some other cities that you rarely find. There. So it's important. So if I'm going to give my top five, of course I'm going to be partial. I would first of all start with my <coughs> city. So I live in Wrocław, but in English it's called Roklo. So this is going to be my top one because this is where I okay. live. Okay, Rokla. Rokla, that's number yes. one. Yes. Number one. Number two, let's go to the capital city. So I would say Warsaw. Warsaw, okay. Mm -hmm. So I would also talk about Krakow because Krakow is also very... Krakow. And because I've been there before, we have to put it there. Krakow, good. <laughs> yes. So yes. we have Krakow as well. And then we have uh, we have Poznan. Poznan. Poznan is also... Okay. Mm -hmm. And then okay. we have Gidan. Okay. What somebody's just asking here, what's the average fees like for international students? Okay, so it depends. Like here, they divide uh, uh, the schools based on the courses. So like for engineering courses and technical courses, they are usually separated. So those ones you would normally see, uh, the tuition would be around, okay, like you would see from, say, 1,500 euros to 3,000 as the school fee. 1,500? 1, 1, Per semester, yes. I paid, what? I paid, I paid, 000, <laughs> I wow. paid 2,000 euros per semester. I paid 2,000 euros per semester. That's, that's pretty decent. That's pretty decent. <laughs> wow, wow. Okay. And can you work as a student? Absolutely. How, how can you work? Okay, so in Poland, there is no barrier as, as you're a student. They don't tell you, okay, you need to work a certain amount of hours in a, in, a, in a week. So it's just like the same for students as it is for ordinary workers. So both students and workers have 40 hours a week to work. So you can work 40 hours a week without any form of violation. As During, I mean, while you're in session, you can work 40 hours? Yes, while you're in session. Wow, it depends. wow. You're guys, able to guys, Poland is the way. I mean, you can only, you, you can spend as low as 1,000 euros per semester. You can work 40 hours a week. So if you are thinking and considering Poland is the way, you see, after this video, 
Bombard a DM on Instagram, on Twitter. Bombard it and send her messages. And she will bill you. She will bill you and charge you. It's not free of charge. Consultation is not free of charge. So, but, but she would help you to actualize your dreams, okay? Um, that's fantastic. What's the standard of living, the cost of living? There? Is it expensive? And which cities, uh, I mean, should one look out for? Okay, so, um, like, what actually motivated me to come into Poland, like, what, like, gave it up for me was the fact that it was actually affordable, like, in a month, when it comes Sorry, to, like, hold on. because someone I live alone. Is, someone is saying, say your name. Can you say your name so that everybody can hear? Someone is saying, say your name. Oh, um, my name is Ahobi <laughs> My name Are is okay? Ahobi Wom. So you... Okay, okay, so, good. Now, let continue, please. Okay, so um, we were talking about standard of living. So I was saying that the standard of living here is really affordable. So even as a student that has maybe you don't have like a proper corporate job that is paying you a lot, you can survive here. So um, I find myself, because I live alone, so let me, let me use a single uh, person in this scenario. So I find myself spending over let's say 250 to 300 watts in monthly so this is equivalent to like 25 to 30 say that again 250 euro every month no not euros what is what is? i told you we okay. spend what and what's what's the conversion rate it's times four so it's times four of the euro sorry the euro is yeah times four the euro is four times greater than this what is. so if uh oh 200 what is going to be like 200 Whoa. wow yeah like 50 euros like 50 euros you survive with 50 euros in a yes. month yes yes on feeding yes i can actually i don't, I don't die <laughs> yeah. wow that is so cheap that is so cheap okay what about getting jobs if you want to come via the job routes Okay, so if you want to come via the job routes, this is the problem now. The, the thing you need to do, first of all, is you need to get an employer. So an employer needs to be willing to process your documents for you. So you cannot just come. You have to have a job first. So this so employer you have to go online and search for jobs. Yeah, you have to go online and search for jobs. So the employer needs to, first of all, try to uh, process a work permit for you and other documents, yeah, other supporting documents they would send to you in order for you to go to the embassy and apply for a work visa, and then you come to work for them. Okay. Uh, while we wait, can you just type in the comment section, your comment section there, can you type your YouTube channel? Just type the name you they should look for on YouTube. Okay, I'm doing that. Yeah, so that they can... So That's it's it. A -W -H -O. B I W O M A B U. And if we put that on YouTube, we'll find you immediately. Yes, you would is find there, me immediately. Is there a website one can go to to find jobs in Poland? Is there any? Yeah, uh, we usually like you can find jobs on LinkedIn. So, like the, pop, the popular job uh, uh, search uh, application. So, LinkedIn, we have OLX. So, we also have an OLX here. So, OLX.pl. So, you okay. can find jobs. Yes, on olx.pl. There's also gum okay. tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, another thing is um, racism, because I know it's close to Germany, and Germans, blah, 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 let's not say that, but you know, you know what I mean. And I know, but I know from history, like when I think of Poland and Nigerians, the first person that comes to my mind is Olisadebe, who played for the um, Polish national team, Nigerian mm -hmm. footballer, yeah. Um, how do they treat Nigerians? Do you find a lot of Nigerians in Poland? Okay, yes. We have a community here in Poland. So we have Nigerians in Poland. And then in each city, you'd find out that a lot of Nigerians are coming together to like form like groups. So uh, when it comes to racism, personally, I would say I've not really experienced like racism like in my face. The things that I have experienced would be, okay, the regular staring. So this is something that is very common. You would find people staring at you. Then if, for example, you decide to, like, pack up your hair in an afro, they would be curious as to why you're packing your hair or what's going on with your hair. So you'd have this. Another thing you would have is, this one is usually really funny to me. It's like you would find, like, older women, mostly older women or older men, trying to have conversations with you, trying to touch your hair, trying to just oh, be on okay. your face. 
this is something that they do and then the the the, the i think the harshest form of the harshest i've ever had is um having a drunk person actually like just blot out some stuff from yeah some because stuff, he was yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to stay away from every normal person that is not under the influence of alcohol would not come into your face or would not try to fight or say anything to you okay now um another thing that we should ask is about language in poland they speak polish you said now do we have to learn the language to come in um are there courses that you can learn in english what's the situation like Okay, so officially, Polish is the language. So in the streets, everywhere you go, everything is all in Polish. So it's important for you to at least know Polish, like conversational Polish, know the basics, be able to understand it. So uh, of course, there are courses that you, you can actually like go to a language school to learn Polish if you want, you can do this. And also like my course was in English. So in schools, you find out that... Um, the courses are either taken in English or in Polish. So you have those two different modes of instruction. So if your course is in English, your lecturers, everything would be taught in English. All your assignments, everything would be in English. If it's in Polish, everything would be in Polish. But you need to know the basics, at least have conversation. But, but basically, you're saying that with English, you can survive in Poland. Yes. I barely know how to speak Polish. I just know the basic things. I know I know how to walk my way around and have like very little conversations with people. That's what I know. Okay. And when you finish, if you come for master's or PhD, uh, how long do you, I mean, can you stay for after you graduate? If you want to okay. work towards your citizenship or something like that. Okay. So uh, Poland allows you as a graduate of a Polish university to stay back for one year. So one year to find a job. So the good thing about graduating from a Polish university is it gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, when That's why when we started, we started by saying that it was easier to come the school route than the work route. Because when you come as a worker, you're stuck with your company. So if you need to move to a different job, it's the same process all over again. You need okay. a different employer to help you process a new work permit. But as a student of, or as a graduate of a Polish university, you do not need a work permit. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just um, seeing somebody's question now asking that what is PR? PR means permanent residence. That's what we're talking about. P PR means permanent residence. So it means when you graduate, you have one year to find a good job and <laughs> then you can continue towards your permanent, your, your citizenship if that's the plan. Okay. Let me explain. So okay. um, everyone coming in, so either you're coming for school or you're coming for work. You would most likely be coming with a visa that is one year, like is valid for only one year. So the moment you get here, you need to apply for a temporary residence card. So now your temporary residence card is dependent on the reason why you're staying in Poland. If you're staying as a student, you would apply based on the fact that I'm here, I'm a student, I need a temporary residence card in order to stay longer than my one year visa. So if, for example, you're a student, a master's student, master's is usually one and a half or two years, depending on your course. So most likely, if you're applying with those documents, you would get a one-year temporary residence. If you're a worker, it depends on your contract. So if your working contract says you're working only for one year, the period is one year, if you're applying with a one-year contract, they would give you only for one year. However, if you're able to get an indefinite contract, you would be able to get three years. So you would get a temporary residence that allows you to stay and work in Poland for three years. Okay. After this period, to proceed to being a permanent resident of Poland, what you need to do is, first of all, I'll divide it into three categories. The first category is someone who has worked in Poland for five years. So okay. you must have worked here for five years, paid your taxes and everything for five years before you're eligible to apply for a PR. If you came in as a student, you must have schooled in Poland for 10 years. 10 years, that's I'm counting from secondary school, university, master's. So that accumulated period of time would be what they would count as a student. So 10 years. And then if you marry a Polish citizen, you should be married for three years before you're able to apply for the permanent residency. Okay. And once you have a PR, one year later, you can apply for your citizenship. Okay, good, brilliant.
I want them to hear this from you. Is IELTS needed to school in Poland? Some schools need it. Some schools do not need it. In situations where, because you're coming from an, if you're coming from an English speaking country, you can ask the school to share, do a Skype interview and you speak with them. They just want to be sure that you know how to speak English. So oh. if, if they schedule a Skype interview and you speak with them, they just ask you a couple of questions, get to know you and you're comfortable speaking English, then that will happen. That would just, they would forget about the IELTS. That's one. Two, if you already have the IELTS, of course, you can put it that, oh, I have a, a certificate showing I know how to speak English. And the third option would be to get a professor or your dean in your previous university to write that you have been actually learning, like all your schooling years have been done in English. So either three ways can fly. Wow, wow, that's interesting. So in, in summary, before I ask you the next question, in summary, you're saying that Poland has a good standard of living. Things are very cheap in Poland. You don't need to have a block account to get into Poland. You don't need to have a large, huge amount of money in your account, maybe 2 million Naira in your account would do just good. You don't need IELTS to study in Poland. Um, you probably just, you can get an IELTS waiver. You don't need the language that much to be able to study in Poland. You can do well with your English. When you finish or graduate, you get one year to get a full job and you can mm -hmm. continue as you walk towards your permanent residence. Uh, when you live in Poland, you can get a job and work 40 hours a week. Wow, exactly. awesome. So it's, it's brilliant. Basically, what you're telling us now is for those of us in Nigeria who really want to jack, who want to move, there is no excuse, really. So if you have 2 million naira, 2.5 million naira, you can start thinking of Poland. Of course. Wow, wow, awesome. Okay. Now, guys, um, I need you to please, can you type again your username so that they can find you on okay. YouTube? Now, what she's going to type is a username on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter. Okay. You can find her there. Bombard her with DMs and send her messages concerning <laughs> Poland. She would, if you check out our YouTube channel, it's everything Poland. Everything Poland. And she has awesome content, okay? I also do stuff on my YouTube channel. I'm sure everybody knows it's Waka Waka Doctor. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Twitter. I do everything travel. And today we've been talking about Poland. Um, after this interview, you can come back at any time to uh, check um, um, this page and just go through it. Yes, um, there are, somebody's asking and saying, is it 2 million Naira including fees? Is it 2 million naira that you need including fees? No, it's not including fees. 2 million naira is just to show and prove that you can take care of yourself. But she has stated from the beginning of this video that you probably need just 1,000 euros per semester as tuition fees. 1,500 so, euros. 1,500 euros as tuition fees. That's like 1,200 pounds. That's like 600,000 naira. You know, it's, it's, it's not really, it's something you can save and plan for. Wow, mm -hmm. awesome, awesome. That's good. What are, what are the fun things to do in Poland? I know mm, you said okay. African foods. There are lots of African food in Poland. What are the fun things to do in Poland? There are different destinations. Like uh, in summer, you can try to go to the northern part of Poland. So that's the Dines, Gdynia, and Sopot. So these three places, they are close to the seaside. So you just enjoy the seaside. They have like a lot of tourists in that time of the year in the northern part. Uh, for this, as in, at, at the moment, so in winter, you can go to like Opone. So if you're into uh, hiking, ice skating, anything uh, ice related, you can go there. And of course, every city has like a tourist attraction, something to look forward to. So you can decide to like just check it off your list to make sure you go to every city in Poland. Because there's also one thing in all the cities, there's a Rinek. So Rinek is like uh, the marketplace, so like the center. So every city in Poland has a Rinex. So you could decide to, oh, let me go to all the Rinex in every city to see if it's exactly the same. So you could do this as well. Okay, okay. Someone is asking and saying that, yes, the labor market is friendly. Um, yes, the visa is Schengen visa. So you can travel to other cities, yes. isn't it? Yes, I travel um, to other About 26 of, is it 26 of them? 26 Schengen countries? I'm not, yes, yes 26. 
So you can go to, if you have a Polish visa, you can go to Portugal, you can go to Germany, you can go to France, you can go to Finland, Sweden, Finland Norway, yeah. Denmark. It's, it's, someone is asking, can a mother school in Poland with kids? Hmm. So uh, a mother who already has, someone who already has children, if you apply and you get a, 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 you get admission and when it comes to your visa, you would need to apply for a visa for your child. So that's what is going to happen in that case. I've, I, I, you just need to apply for a visa for your child as well. Okay. Someone is saying some of us are not about school. We just want to hustle. Which agency would you recommend to provide jobs for immigrants before they come to Poland? I send me she has, she, send she a DM. Tell you about exactly. that. Exactly. Send send a DM. Send a DM to her, and she will tell you about that one. It's not everything. We will cha 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 here. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, if if you want to send her a DM, send her a DM, and she would answer you. So this video is all things Poland. Again, please can you spell? Maybe this time, spell what your username is. Okay. What your username I, is. Spell I it. Do, no, just say it. Don't type it. Say it. A-W-H-O-B-I-W-O-M. -O -O no, no, I mean, I mean your handle. Oh, your handle. oh my handle. Oh, my yes. handle is A-W-H-O-B-E-E-W-O-R-M. A W H O B E E W O R M. And that's how you can meet her on Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. If you put it there, it comes out. It's everything Poland. So basically, there's no excuse for you if you want to go to Poland. Is there anything we've missed about? Mm. Anything you want to tell us about Poland? Uh, unless it would be the questions, I don't think there is any other thing I would like to add. How much, how much is the average salary for workers in Poland? So it depends. So if you're doing like, uh, so for jobs here, they are also categorized. So if you're doing like the unskilled jobs, no, not unskilled, on uh, corporate jobs. So you're yes. doing like, if you're working with a factory or you're doing delivery or any of those kind of jobs. So you could uh, have like maybe 17 zloty per hour. So from 17 zloty to say 23 or 25 zloty. So it goes about that. So it depends on the hours. Those those jobs count according to the hours that you have worked. So they don't have like a fixed salary. But if you come to like the corporate jobs, I know um, you could start thinking from 2,500 zloty and as far as it goes. So okay. It All right. So let's end it there. This has been 35 minutes of time spent talking about Poland, okay? Um, if you have further questions, find her on Instagram, on Twitter, send her DMs. She's going to answer your question. Um, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure having you, okay? Thank you. Thank you so um, much for... And just bombada, bombada, guys. Send her, send her yeah, DMs. Send answer me you. A D okay, let me, let me tell myself. Send me a okay. DM. Also, uh, on my YouTube channel as well, I'm always creating content about living in Poland, moving to Poland. So you could check this out at Abu Biwom Abu. So just check it out. I am always down there in the comment section, replying to messages as much as I can. So also try to go there, ask questions there. If you can't reach me on my DMs, you can also send thank on you, my Nii. YouTube channel. Thank you, so thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. All right, it's been a pleasure. Um, I hope that Likewise. we can do this some other time again. Okay. I will leave the video on my page. Um, you mm -hmm. can direct people as well to check if they want to. All right? It's Waka Waka Doctor signing out. <laughs> Peace. Bye. Bye.